In this video, we're going to continue our exploration of simplifying expressions and working with radical expressions in, in particular. Uh, in each of these problems down below, notice that we do have square roots. Uh, most of these are actually already simplified, right? If you look at the square root of 2, uh, we can look at that and say, oh, well, that's as simplified as it can get. Uh, there's 2 as a, as a prime number. There's no doubles or pairs in there. 3, 2, 5, and 10, all of those are simplified square roots. Uh, square root of 20, however, is not. We could do a little bit of work on that one to make life a little bit better. Let's go ahead and do that. Oops. So in this particular problem, if we want to simplify the square root of 20, uh, we can look at its prime factors. 20 is 4 times 5 and 2 times 2, so we have a pair of 2's there. So we can write that as the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. And then we can take the square root of 4, which is 2, and then have the square root of 5. So if there are uh, square roots that can be simplified, of course, that's part of our simplification process. None of these other square roots, though, have perfect squares in them. And so instead, what we'd like to be able to do to make sure that our, our final form is simplified, our final form, simplified form, should not have square roots in the denominator, or any radicals, really no radicals in the denominator. So if we have radicals in the denominator, our job is going to be to try to get rid of them first. We actually have a mathematical process for doing this, for getting rid of the denominator, uh, or getting rid of radicals in the denominator, and we call it rationalizing the denominator. It's just a big fancy math term for it. Um, but what it means is we're going to get rid of square roots that are in the denominator. In order to get rid of the square roots, uh, what we keep in mind, we're not trying to change the problem at all. We want this to be our answer. We just want to write it in a prettier form that doesn't have a square root on the bottom. So what we're going to do, uh, kind of like what we did with dimensional analysis, is we are going to multiply by 1, but a very clever form of 1 that's going to get us out of our square roots. Right now, I've got a square root of 2 on the bottom. If I multiply by another square root of 2, what that's going to do is it's going to give me the other pairs that I need so I can make a perfect square. But if I do square root of 2 on the bottom, I have to do it on the top because what I'm multiplying by has to be equal to 1. So I haven't changed anything in my problem, right? All I'm doing here is I'm just making this, multiplying by something that's the same as 1. All right, so now that I've kind of got that underway, let's see what happens. On the top, I do 5 times the square root of 2. I can't multiply those together because one's inside the square root and the other's not. On the bottom, I can do the square root of 2 times the square root of 2. I can multiply those because they're both inside, and that gives me the square root of 4. So now when I go to finish simplifying this expression, notice on the bottom I have a perfect square. That's by design. If I don't get a perfect square, I did it wrong. I was trying to get a perfect square on the bottom because now I can take the square root of 4, and it's just 2. And this is my best final simplified form, and this is just our commonly accepted way of doing it. If there's any radicals, they've been simplified, and if there are any radicals in the denominator, we have rerouted them and rewritten the problem in a different way. So with problem uh, number 14, let's do the same sort of approach. We did notice that there was a square root of 20, so we did have to simplify that radical. Um, and then we need to, now we need to get rid of the square root of 5 that's in the denominator. I don't like square root of 5 in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply by the square root of 5. That'll give me a nice perfect square. And on the top, I have to do the same thing, so that the fraction that I'm multiplying by is equal to 1. When I multiply across the top, I get 5 times the square root of 5. When I multiply across the bottom, I get 2 times the square root of 5 times square root of 5, which is the square root of 25. I liked doing this because it gives me a perfect square, and I can take the square root of 25. So I leave everything else the same. 5 squared of 5 on top, 2 is over here, and then I can take the square root of 25, which is 5, and that comes out of the radical because I took the square root. Now it's just a matter of kind of rewriting and simplifying things a little bit. This is going to give me 5 root 5. I can do the 2 times 5 on the bottom and get 10. But now notice that I have these, this 5 and 10 are in a fraction, and they're both outside. I can reduce that fraction by dividing the top and the bottom by 5 here. And so I end up with 1 times the square root of 5 over 2. This is the very most simplified form of my final fraction. There's no radicals in the denominator. Uh, the radicals that I have are all simplified, 
and my fractions are simplified. So you do need to consider and take into account all three of those different parts of simplifying an expression when you do these problems. Uh, which order you do it in doesn't really matter, but you always need to check along the way. Um, so for example, you could have started by doing square root of 20 over square root of 20, and then got later worried about getting those um, radicals simplified. So the order doesn't matter so much as just the fact that we take care of all of those steps. Let's take a look at problem 15. In this one, notice that we have a radical on the top and a radical on the bottom. I don't care about the radical on the top. It's totally fine. I just don't like the square root of 2 on the bottom. So to get rid of it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. And again, the reason I'm doing this is I want to end up with something that has a pair, of, so a pair of common factors so I can actually take the square root. All right, now I'm going to multiply across the top. This time I have square root of 3 times square root of 2, and I can actually multiply those because they're both inside the square root this time, so I get square root of 6. On the bottom, I had a 2 that was outside the square root, and then I had a square root of 2 times square root of 2 gives me a square root of 4 inside the square root. And by design, I have a perfect square on the bottom now. So leaving everything else the same, square root of 6 on top, 2 times, but then I'm going to do the square root of 4 is just plain old 2, and it's outside of the square root. This gives me the square root of 6 over 4, and that will be my final most simplified answer. Do double check your, your radicals. Uh, notice that here I have the square root of 6. Uh, 6 is just 2 times 3. There's no pairs there, so I can't simplify that particular radical anymore. But just always double check. Can I simplify my fraction? Can I do any of those things? Notice we cannot simplify the 6 and the 4 at all because one's inside the square root and the other is not. That means they're off limits for, combina for combinations. All right, let's try the last example here. Notice again, I've got a square root of 10 in the denominator, and that's a problem. So to cleverly get rid of it, I'm going to multiply by the version of 1 that's going to give me the extra pairs that I need for that radical. So getting rid of the square root of 10, I'm going to multiply by root 10 over root 10. And then let's see what we get. On the top, square root of 5 times square root of 10 is square root of 50. We can multiply them because they're both inside. On the bottom, square root of 10 times square root of 10 is square root of 100. And this, by design, gave us the perfect factors we need, and we can take the square root of that, and it's plain old 10. Remember, you take the square root and it comes out. And on the top, I have the square root of 50. I can't reduce 50 and 10 right now because they're both inside the square root. Um, and so, but, and, and so I, I'm done with this problem, except for the fact that after I multiplied this, I ended up with the square root of 50. There are, in fact, some perfect squares hiding in there. Notice that 52 goes into it, 2 times 25 and 25 is 5 times 5, I could break that square root of 50 down a little bit, and I should definitely do that before I say I'm done with this problem. So here I put all my doubles in the first one, so 20, square root of 25, and all my leftovers in the second one, so I have square root of 2. I do that over 10, and I do that because I had a perfect square that was hiding in there. Square root of 25 is 5 times the square root of 2 over 10, so I just took that perfect square. And now I have a 5 and a 10 that I can reduce because they're both outside of the square roots. So 5 goes into the top once, 5 goes into the bottom twice, and I end up with 1 square root of 2 over plain old 2 with no radical. And this is in its most simplified form because all the radicals in the problem are reduced, the fraction is reduced, and there's no square root in the bottom. So those are all the different pieces that we need to keep track of as we're trying to simplify these expressions.